The M4 MacBook Air is finally here and it's a fantastic computer. In this video, we're going to be talking about my first impressions of the 15 inch M4 model, who I think it's for and who I think should maybe steer for a different model instead. I'm gonna have links to all my favorite configurations of this computer in the description below. Or if you're looking to buy a Mac and you need some personalized recommendations, also, I've got a link that you can fill out and get some personalized recommendations from me. This is the first time I've used the 15 inch MacBook Air and the size of this thing is amazing because Apple has combined their sleek, lightweight MacBook Air with a larger screen. And I used to get asked a lot, Adam, I wanna get a bigger computer, but I don't wanna go all the way up to the more expensive 15 or 16 inch Pro. And this computer does exactly what it's supposed to. It fills that need of having a larger screen while still having portability and the slim size of the MacBook Air. It's just so lightweight. Whenever you pick it up, you can tell that Apple really wanted this to be as small as possible. I will say after using the 13 inch M1 MacBook Air for years, you definitely feel that this is a bigger and heavier computer, but somehow it still feels lighter than my M1 MacBook Pro. So I'm really impressed with the design and the size of it. And also the midnight color looks so great. Over the years, Apple has put the MagSafe port back on the computer and now we get two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the MacBook Air, which is fantastic because you can use a ton of high-speed peripherals. And finally, Apple has updated the M4 chips with two external displays. So with the M3 MacBook Air, you could use one external display or you could use two if you shut the screen down. But now you can actually use this with two external displays while having the screen open. They've also continued to add features to it like the higher quality webcam, center stage for the webcam, and they continue to improve the quality of the microphones that are built into the computer as well, which is really useful for FaceTime, Zoom, or other video calling applications. Now here's a quick recording test with the center stage off. I think the quality of this does look a little bit better and you don't have to worry about it following you around as you move your head around. Now we're doing a quick recording test using the center stage on this so you can see if you move around, it will kind of keep you in frame, which kind of looks a little dorky, but it also is kind of cool to have that available as an option as well. And you can get an idea of the sound quality from the microphones built into the 15 inch MacBook Air. What's been really cool to watch with the MacBook Air lineup is the way that Apple has continued to make it more and more powerful, where now it almost feels like the MacBook Air could be used as what the MacBook Pro used to be used for people. So before it felt like you could really only use an Air if you were doing basic productivity tasks or like office administration work, stuff like that. But ever since the M series have come out, the Airs have continued to get better and better, faster and faster, and perform really well, even doing more professional work. Now what I did notice yesterday, I was editing a lot of 6K footage on Final Cut Pro, running four streams at the same time. It was bogging down a little bit, but then as soon as I switched to optimized media, it started to work really great again. So it feels like with this computer, you can get away with doing stuff that you used to not be able to get away with doing on the MacBook Air. But if you do find yourself to be a power user or a creative professional, and you're doing this kind of work all day, every day, that's when you should probably look into buying the Pro instead because the Pro is gonna give you the ability to get higher end graphics cards, as well as having a couple more ports on the side of them, and it also gives you better thermal performance with the fan. Now, it is super nice that there's no fans that you have to worry about with the Air because it is so cool and quiet whenever you're doing day-to-day -day tasks. So the 15 inch is a really great size for users who want something that's portable, yet still gives you tons of screen real estate to get stuff done. I've been using the 14 inch Pro for a long time and I really appreciated the 15 inch screen when I was doing some video editing on this because you just get more room to work with, but with this computer, you're really not sacrificing anything in the realm of portability, even though you do have the bigger screen. It's got all the other features we know and love with the Apple MacBook Air. It has fantastic typing performance. The trackpad is responsive and works really well. Touch ID in the top right corner. The speakers on it sound really good, so you're gonna enjoy using this. Even to listen to music, it's not gonna sound as good as using real headphones or using your AirPods or giant speakers, but Apple has done a really great job at packing a ton of sound quality into the computers. So during day-to-day -day use, I didn't notice the computer getting hot or having any issues with heat. The only time I noticed the heat was when I really pushed this computer running Final Cut Pro, doing that multi-cam edit that we were talking about. That's when the computer did start to get a little bit bothered by the amount of work I was putting it through. But I think that's the really cool thing about the MacBook Air is that you can get away with doing that. You're not gonna run into any issues, especially if you're using it on a desk. If you have an external keyboard or mouse, then you're really not even gonna have to worry about the temperature of the computer because you're not gonna be touching it. Whenever I was using the computer for normal day-to-day -day tasks like writing emails, typing, other stuff like that, the computer performed just fine. I didn't have any issues at all with heat generation or with feeling uncomfortable with this, which is an issue that I still run into on the MacBook Pro even with the fans built into it. 
It's too early to give good battery life indications, but Apple does say you can expect up to 18 hours of battery life on this computer, which is technically less than what the Pro is able to offer, but you're gonna be trading off a little of that higher battery power for the lighter weight of the computer. Now, what else is different if you get either the 13 or 15 inch Air and the Pro? Well, the main difference is just the screen brightness is gonna be half the total brightness of what the new MacBook Pros are able to do, and you're not gonna get the liquid XDR screen with the higher dynamic range, which for most people, you're really not gonna notice that because the screen is still very color accurate and more than bright enough for most day-to-day -day use. There's really only a few things I have to say that are bad about the Air. The first thing is I do miss the SD card slot and the HDMI port on the side of the computer is always really handy with the new MacBook Pros, as well as the extra Thunderbolt port as well. Those are just the kind of quality of life features that you can get around with by using a dongle, or other adapters, but it's nice to have those built into the computer for when you're going to give presentations or just doing day-to-day -day office tasks. Those are the features that sometimes can really come in handy. And then when they're missing from a computer, you do start to miss them a little bit. Another thing that I will say is even though this is missing the fans, I think for most people, it's not gonna be an issue. And I've only ever heard negative things about fans from casual users, especially when we had the 2019 MacBook Airs that had all sorts of issues with fan noise. I had so many friends who got those and did not like that computer at all because it was so stinking loud and really interrupted their work. So that's why I'm totally fine with the MacBook Air not having fans because for most users, it's not gonna be an issue. It will start to thermal throttle if you're running apps like Final Cut Pro, but again, for the way most people are gonna use it, it's really not an issue at all. And it's just crazy to think that this computer had no issues with actually rendering and exporting 4K videos out of my 6K footage that I was working on with my Lumix S52X camera. So there's just so much you can get away with using the MacBook Air for. So who is the 15 inch MacBook Air really for? It's for the user who's been looking for a larger screen MacBook without having to go all the way up to the top of the line 16 inch MacBook Pro. You still get a really bright, high quality display, a great keyboard, great trackpad, MagSafe. Now there's Thunderbolt 4 ports on the side, and you also get support for up to two external displays with this computer without having to use any sort of display link drivers or any extra adapters. So this is a fantastic computer for users who want the bigger screen without having to go all the way up to the more expensive 16 inch MacBook Pro. If you're interested in buying a MacBook Air, I'm gonna have links for my favorite versions of the 15 inch in the description below. If you want some personalized help picking out a computer, I've also got a form you can fill out where I'll get back to you and help you decide on a computer for you. Or also, feel free to check out my MacBook Air Buyer's Guide video.